Greetings to all. Welcome back to online classes. Today we are going to study lesson 5 classical world. Lesson 5 classical world. Before that, totally 7 continents are there. Totally 7 continents are there. First Asia, Africa, Europe, North America, South America, Australia and Antarctica. Antarctica is the IC continent. Asia is our continent because our country India is there. And when this America, Australia and Africa remind outside the world, civilizations developed in two continents only. Okay. When this America, Australia and Africa remind outside the world registry, civilizations developed in only two continents. They are Asia and Europe. Asia and Europe. Asia and Europe together known as Eurasia. Eurasia. Okay. Some of the civilizations reached the classical era. Some of the civilizations reached the classical era. In this classical era, empires began to develop. Empires began to develop from Rome to Persia. Rome to Persia. And Persia to Peshawar. Persia to Peshawar. The expansion of this civilization removed the geographical gap. The expansion of the civilization removed the geographical gap. So, inter-regional trade contacts emerged. Inter-regional trade contacts emerged. Ideas, technology and arts also developed. Okay, ideas, technology and art also developed. Next we will see Greece, Hellenistic world, Hellenistic world, Hellenistic, that is a Hellen is a set of people, those who lived in Greece, okay, so we are going to see Greece, Hellenistic world, classical world include ancient Rome and Greece, ancient Rome and Greece, until 8th century BC, Greece was not different from rest of the world. Greece was not different from the rest of the world. People were illiterate only. Okay. Their life was very difficult. They followed the old method in the production of crafts. Old method in the production of crafts. Except Sparta. Sparta is a state in Greece like Athens. Okay. Other areas are mountainous regions only. So, agriculture was very, very limited. But the Greeks founded colonies on the sea coast. Okay, well, so, trade developed and they earned revenue also. By the 8th century BC, Greece was turned into a network of city states. Many cities joined together and network of began consider that it is developed and turned into a network of city-state. Acropolis. Acropolis is a fortified city of the people of Greece. Okay. That is the ancient Greeks. It was constructed on a hill in Athens. Okay. Constructed on a hill in Athens. It is the best example. Okay. It is the best example of their advancement. Of their advancement. The city-states often fought against each other. The city-states often fought against each other. But they were together, they were together by trade, common alphabet, practicing religion and also festivals. Okay. If they were fighting with each other also, they were together in trade, common alphabets, similar religious practices and also festivals. Olympic sports and games. Okay. Olympic sports and games is the illustrious, we can say best example, illustrious example. The, in Greece, the ruling class controlled the land. In Greece, the ruling class people controlled it. But the slaves cultivated the land. 
slaves cultivated the land. Now Greeks victory over Persians. That is the war between the people of Greece and the people of Persia. Okay, Persia. Darius was the king of Persia. Darius was the king of Persia. He decided to conquer the Greek city-states. His aim was to capture the Greek city-states. And the first Persian attack on Greece was a failure one. Okay. First Persian attack on Greece was a failure one. Because the army was suffered from disease. The army was suffered from disease and no food was there. That is a shortage of food. Okay. For the army, no proper food was given. So, the Persians planned another war. So, in the second attack, the Persians avoided the land route and they took or they selected the sea route only. Okay. The Greeks fought patriotically. Patriotism is a bhakti. And defeated the Persian army at Marathon. So, in the second battle of that is the Greeks and the Persians, the Persians were defeated by the Greeks at Marathon in 490 BC. 490 BC. After Darius, another one king came to power. His name was Sepsis. Okay. He also decided to wage war against the Greeks. Okay. His aim, what, what is the aim of this Sepsis? Decided to wage war against Greece. This time, the people of Athens joined with the people of Sparta. So, Athens people and the people of Sparta joined together and they fought against the Persians. Okay, fought against the Persians. Battle of Salamis. Salamis, Salamis, that's Salamis name of a place. Only. Battle of Salamis was the last battle. Battle of Salamis, that's the last battle. In this battle, Persian ships were destroyed. Okay, Persian ships were destroyed. This hearted king Sexus, okay, this hearted king Sexus returned to Persia without achieving his goal. He didn't get anything from Greece, okay. Next, democracy in Greece. What we are going to see? Democracy in Greece. When the Greek city states emerged, they followed the legacy of the past only. Understand? They followed the past things only, past characters only. The rulers came from traditional chieftains, ruling heads. Chieftains means what? Ruling heads. Because of the trade, some people became rich. Understand? Because of trade, some people became rich. These rich people opposed the old ruling class people. People, old ruling families. The age of tyrants. Tyrants in Tamil means Kodunkolar. Okay. The age of tyrants that is from 6th century BC to 4th century BC. 6th century BC to 4th century BC is considered as what the age of tyrants. And this period there was an urban development that is cities developed. Okay. New buildings were built. And very big temples were constructed. Example, Olympian Zeus at Athens. Olympian Zeus at Athens. Next we will see Athenian democracy. Athens democracy. Okay, democratic form of government was there in Athens. That only we are going to see. Democracy means the rule of the people. Democracy means what the role of the people. In Athens, oligarchy. Oligarchy means ruled by a group. A group of people, they are ruling. So, in Athens, oligarchy and tyranny. Tyranny already I told. What is that? Kodunko Lachintam was removed. So, oligarchy and tyranny was removed because of the pressure from the lower class people. Okay. Because of the pressure from the lower class people. And democracy was formed. 
and then democracy was founded. The law making power of Athens was in the hands of the assembly. So, assembly has the right to make a laws. Okay, assembly has the right to make a laws. Judges and lawyer officials were selected by lots. Lots means what? That is kuluk in Tamil word. Okay, so judges and these lawyer officials were selected by lots. This arrangement was not liked by the upper class people. Okay, this arrangement was not liked by the upper class people because they considered democracy is the role of mob, M-O-B. Democracy is the rule of a mob. And because of the Persian attacks, the Greeks united themselves. Understand? The Greeks united themselves because of the Persian attack. When the Persian danger was removed, okay, when the Persian danger was over, the Greeks quarreled among themselves. Understand? They fought against each other. And the rich landowners opposed democracy continuously. Okay? Opposed this democracy continuously. Anyhow, democracy was survived in Athens for about 200 years. That means democracy was there. That is, democratic form of government was there in Athens for how many years? 200 years. Next, we will see Pericles. Understand that? About the pericles we are going to study. Athens had the greatest leader and his name was pericles. Athens had the greatest leader, his name was what? Pericles. He ruled Athens for 30 years. Understand that? That means he became the king of Athens for how many years? 30 years. During this rule, Athens and Sparta fought against each other continuously. So, continuous struggle, continuous war was going on with between the people of Sparta and the people of Athens. This is known as the Peloponnesian War. Okay. The people of Athens and Sparta continuously fought against each other and that war was known as what? The Peloponnesian War. Peloponnesian War. Athens faced hostility and disturbance from Sparta. Hostility means enmity. So, Athens, the people of Athens faced hostility and disturbance from Sparta. Yet, Athens became a noble city. Understand that? Yet, Athens became a noble city with wonderful buildings. Many buildings were constructed. They were great artists and thinkers. Many artists were there and also many thinkers were there. So, historians call this age as the age of pericles. What is that? Age of pericles. Now, beginning of Hellenistic civilization. We are going to see beginning of Hellenistic civilization. Cultural development. Cultural development that took place very fast after the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC. Okay. Cultural development took place very fast after the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC. That is called the Hellenistic Civilization. It is called what? The, that the cultural development. That is called the Hellenistic Civilization. The Greek city states did not have elaborate bureaucracy. Bureaucracy means the powerful rulers. Bureaucracy means what? The powerful rulers. So they showed their dynamism. Dynamism here means strength. Okay, dynamism here means what? Strength. During the time of Alexander the Great of Macedonia, the Greeks established a kingdom in Macedonia only. Okay. During the time of Alexander the Great, these Greeks established their kingdom in Macedonia. Macedonian kingdom annexed two historic empires. Two historic empires were annexed or captured by Macedonian, Macedonian kingdom successfully. They are Egypt and the Middle East. They are Egypt and the Middle East. But the entire period of Alexander's rule was spent on wars only. Spent on wars only. The Greek school of science, maths and philosophy reached its peak in the Greek Egyptian city of Alexandria. Okay. The school of science, the Greek school of science, maths, philosophy reached its peak in the city of Alexandria. That is the Greek Egyptian city. 
Euclid. Euclid formulated the basic theorems of geometry. Okay. Euclid formulated the basic theorems of geometry. Eratosthenes, understand? Eratosthenes accurately, accurately means correctly, correctly calculated the diameter of the earth. Okay, so Eratosthenes correctly calculated the diameter of the earth. Next, Hipparchus. Hipparchus was the founder of trigonometry. Trigonometry was founded by Hipparchus. Next, Ptolemy. See the spelling P T O L E M Y. But the first letter P is silent. We have to say Ptolemy. Okay. Ptolemy followed the ideas of Hipparchus. Ptolemy followed the ideas of Hipparchus and he developed the model of the motion of planets and star. Model of the motion of planets and also stars. Next, we are going to see Roman Republic. What we are going to see? Roman Republic. In the beginning, Rome was a society of agriculturists only. So, agriculture was very famous in Rome. Roman people were divided into two classes, two groups, two sets. First set is Patricians. Second set is Plebeians. Okay, Rome was divided into two classes or the people of Rome was divided into two classes or two divisions, Patricians and the Plebeians. Patricians are rich landlords, Patricians are rich landlords, Plebeians are common citizens only, common citizens only. Rome was located in the criss-crossing trade routes, criss-crossing trade routes, cutting north, south and the east, west. It is cutting north, south and east, west. Taxes were collected from the passenger traders. Taxes were collected from the passenger traders. These taxes increased the revenue. So, revenue increased. By the late 6th century BC, Rome developed a prosperous town. Okay, 6th century BC, Rome developed a prosperous town. Class war between Patricians and the Plebeians. Patricians and the Plebeians. So, in Rome, the prisoners of war, okay, the prisoners of war, we are treated as slaves. Treated as slaves. See, big landlords bought these slaves cheaply, okay. Rich landlords bought these slaves cheaply and used the slaves to cultivate their estates or lands. Cultivated their estate or lands. This slave, so this slave population increased. Slave population increased. By the first century BC, there were 2 million slaves. 2 million slaves were there. But the total population was 3.25 million only. Okay. Among these 2.35 million people, 2 million people were slaves. Okay. What's the reason? The rich landlords bought these slaves for cheaper rent. Okay. Because of this slave labor, there was no job opportunity for the common people, for the free population. Many poor peasants loved their children. Okay. Finally, these poor children became the slaves of the big landlords. Okay. Slaves of the big landlords. The conflict between the patients and the plebeians became pretty Understand? Very hard, very difficult, we can say. Major source of revenue to the Roman state was a slave trade only. Okay. Major source of this slave trade, that is revenue. Major source of revenue was the slave trade only. The island of Delos, island of Delos, D-E-L-O-S, Delos, became a great slave market. Understand? Island of Delos became a great slave market. Tiberius Gracchus and Darius the Gracchus. Tiberius Gracchus and Darius the Gracchus were the two Patricians. Understand that two brothers were from Patricius group. But they talked for the sake of the poor peasants only. Patricians means landlords. But these people talked for the safety of the poor persons only. So the poor peasants supported their program. 
So the poor peasants supported the program program of these patricians. This was not liked by the senators. This was not liked by the senators. The senators are shocked by this development and murdered both of them, both of the Gracchus brothers. And the martyrdom of this Gracchus brothers played an important role in the transformation of this Roman Republic into Roman Empire. So, after the death of this Gracchus brothers, Roman Republic was changed into Roman Empire. Next one is a transfer of power from consuls to emperor. Consuls means generals. Consuls means what? Generals. With the support of of equities. Equities means below senatorial class. The people below the senatorial class were called as what equities. So, with the support of this equities, Marius became the consul. Understand? Marius became the consul. Consul means what? General. Then he took an effort to introduce the land distribution bill. To introduce a land distribution bill in the senate. Land distribution bill in the Senate. This led to a violence. This led to a violence. The allies of Marius were killed. Allies of Marius were killed. So, civil war started in between the followers of Marius and also the followers of Sulla. S U L L A. Followers of Marius and the followers of Sulla. The war was started. Finally, Marius was expelled, removed. Marius was expelled and the Sulla ruled for three years. How many years? Three years. Then Sulla was killed. After the death of this Sulla, another two generals, another two consuls came. They were one Sinna and Catalina. First one was Sinna and the second consul was Catalina. Okay, Catalina. Next, we are going to see establishment of a principate. What we are going to see? Establishment of principate. Principate means a monarchy, monarchical form of a government ruled by a king. Okay. The civil wars related to society, that is, social issues entered. Okay. The civil wars related to social issues entered. Suddenly, civil war started between the generals. Civil war started between the generals. Marius and Sinna. Marius and Sinna fought against the Sulla. Marius and the Sinna fought against the Sulla. Pompey. Pompey fought against Julius Caesar. Okay. Pompey fought against whom? Julius Caesar. After the death of Julius Caesar, can you understand? The war? After the death of Julius Caesar, Brutus and Cassius. Brutus and Cassius fought against Mark Antony. Mark Antony and Octavian. Mark Antony and Octavian. Octavian, the other name of Octavian, that is Augustus. Augustus. He was the nephew of Caesar. He was the nephew of Caesar. And finally, Octavian fought against Mark Antony. Understand? Octavian fought against Mark Antony. Then Augustus and what was his old name? Octavian was allowed to establish a monarchy. Octavian was allowed to establish a monarchy. The period starting from Augustus is known as a principate. Principate monarchy, monarchical form of government. Augustus called himself a imperator. Imperator. Imperator means emperor only. Imperator means emperor only. Next, society under principate. How the society was under the principate? That only we are going to see now. During the period of a principate, okay, that means during the period that is monarchical form of a government was the, uh, the imperial. Imperial ruling class became prosperous. Okay. Imperial ruling class became prosperous. Luxury goods such as silk, spices and also gems came from eastern side. 
okay okay information sir cities were built with temples theaters and baths and also markets stadiums were there gymnasium were there colosseum also there okay the rich people distracted the poor people by organizing games okay rich people distracted the attention of this poor people by organizing games the gladiators the gladiators means a man who fought against another a man who fought against another so gladiators were forced to fight and kill each other gladiators were forced to fight and kill each other the famous writers of augustus siege famous writers of augustus siege brought glory to the empire brought glory to the empire pliny the elder what's the name pliny the elder completed the encyclopedia of science encyclopedia of science this pliny called the encyclopedia of science as natural history pliny's natural history now seneca seneca was another well known author of encyclopedia of science another well known author of encyclopedia of science now next one is horace next one what horace he wrote one book that is odes o d e s o d e s odes and in this book he mentioned this epicurean justification what is that epicurean justification of a pleasure with stoic bravery with stoic bravery in the face of the trouble in the face of the troubles livy l i v y livy was the the prose stylist than the historian okay he was a historian and also prose stylist tacitus tacitus was a best known historian tacitus was a best known historian now virgil virgil wrote one book that is called aeneid aeneid virgil wrote one book that is called what aeneid in this aeneid book it is telling about the roman imperialism from this book we can get a clear idea about the imperial really some of the rock okay children with this i finish today's session how to prepare all the one word answers and i will meet you in the next session okay bye